now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited. Isis, all that glitters. The goddess next door takes on a bikini-clad bank robber in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, all that glitters in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. Yesterday, Facebook went out of its way to ban Minister Louis Farrakhan, Alex Jones, Milo Yiannopoulos, Paul Joseph Watson, and several others off of its platform for being quote-unquote dangerous. And after they banned these individuals for being dangerous, there were a lot of people talking about how this was a violation of the First Amendment under our United States Constitution, which guarantees everyone the right to free speech. Now, the counter-argument to that is saying that Facebook is a private company, and as a private company, they have a right to ban people from their platform for violating their fluid terms of service. However, when I take a critical look at what's going on at Facebook, it reminds me a lot of what transpired way back in 2010 with social media platforms like your MySpace and the comment sections of the America Online and Yahoo. And I look at your MySpace, AOL, and Yahoo, and I see eerie patterns that are starting to repeat themselves. And because I see those patterns starting to repeat themselves, I'm starting to see a vicious cycle as related to the internet. Because 10 years ago, your MySpace was bigger than Facebook. It was the largest social media platform, and it had millions of viewers on that platform. However, once your News Corp purchased MySpace around 2009 and 2010, your MySpace went from a place for friends where millions and billions of people came to have their own personal pages and interact with each other into a hostile environment where your trolls, your spammers, your attention whores came to the platform and that led to people walk, wanting to leave the platform and that was the beginning of the end of MySpace along with the dreadful rollout of the 2.0 format which made it next to impossible to use that platform. And around that same time is when the very popular search engine Yahoo and the website AOL started having problems with their website. And one of the reasons why people stopped using your Yahoo as a search engine was because every time you tried to read articles on Yahoo, it became a place where your political extremists from the far right and the far left would come to bicker and argue. And because these people would come to your Yahoo to bicker and argue with others, you could not have a discussion on the article without it turning into something heated and hostile. The same thing transpired over at America Online, which was already a declining platform in the years before, because at one time AOL was so big that it literally bought Time Warner and owned all the Warner Brothers assets. And I believe it was Steve Case at the time who was the CEO. He was the former CEO of AOL. And that tech giant had so much power that it controlled one of the institutions of big six media. However, once broadband technology came into play and 56K modems became obsolete, People began abandoning America Online because they no longer needed to use a 56K modem and a telephone jack to get the internet. They began getting their internet from cable companies, and that led to the decline of AOL, and eventually your Steve Case was ousted as the CEO of Warner Bro AOL Time Warner at the time, and that led to the decline of your AOL. And your AOL and your Yahoo fell so bad into decline that both companies wound up getting purchased by Verizon, I believe, a couple of years ago because both companies had suffered such serious losses. 
And that was the end of the first generation of your social media. A, a, at one time, again, these companies were so powerful, they had extreme influence. But what wound up undermining them was because your trolls, your attention whores, and your spammers, and your political extremists got on those platforms, they wound up driving away most of the foot traffic that used to come and use those services. Now, when I take a critical look at your MySpace, your AOL, and your Yahoo, I see eerie parallels to what's transpiring right now with Facebook, YouTube, Google, Instagram, and Twitter right now. Because if we look at what your Mark Zuckerberg did on Facebook by banning these very popular people like your Milo Yiannopoulos, your Minister Louis Farrakhan, your Paul Joseph Watson, and your Alex Jones, what they have done is start the same cycle of their decline. Because with Facebook, what they have done is now turn this into a First Amendment issue. And because it's a First Amendment issue with Facebook now, what people are doing is looking for the next alternative because now that they know that they cannot use the social network to socialize and express themselves on a platform, which is the original mission of that platform, what those people are now starting to do is starting to look for other social media sites like your MeWe right now, your Minds.com, and your Gab.ai. And because they are looking for these new platforms to get on, this looks like it's going to be the beginning of the end of your Facebook as we speak. Because when people, again, cannot use a social network to network with other people, and their ideas are considered dangerous because they disagree with those of someone like a Mark Zuckerberg and the people who run Facebook. That means that that social media platform has become an anti-social media platform, and that's when people start looking for alternatives. And recently, we had your YouTube give your Google Alphabet a $70 billion loss because your Susan Wojcicki decided to implement algorithms to try to shadow ban your conspiracy theory videos like those that your Alex Jones produced. And this was on top of an adpocalypse that went on in an effort to try to get people to not talk about certain subjects because those subjects were deemed offensive by your legacy media and certain social justice groups. So they went on a campaign to demonetize many of those videos and many of those channels which produce that content. However, those channels that produce that content oftentimes led to the most views and were building a growing audience on YouTube. And that audience was making money when those channels were monetized. However, in an effort to try to control the content on YouTube, what they did was cost Google Alphabet, the owner of YouTube, a major loss and cost them a whole $70 billion and an 8% market share drop. So the efforts to try to censor those individuals on YouTube has completely backfired on YouTube's um, company, parent company, Google and Alphabet. And right now, your Google and Alphabet are now in the same place that Yahoo and AOL were back in the late 2000s. And what they're doing now is driving away the very same people who came to watch that type of content and came to use their website. The same thing with Google with their search engine. They're trying to redirect people. And what they're doing, again, is just like Yahoo, driving people away from the platform. And when I take a look at their actions right now, your YouTube and your Facebook, they eerily mirror that of your Yahoo 
and your AOL. The same thing with Twitter. They're also trying to censor people who they disagree with. And their, their behavior is, again, also mirroring that of your MySpace, your AOL, and your Yahoo. Because when it comes down to these online companies, what happen, what's happening I'm seeing is this vicious cycle where these companies, they start to get a lot of social influence, they start to become popular, and as they become popular, they start believing that they can start using their influence and popularity of their platforms to try to control others and control the way people think and the way people behave. And whenever you try to control people, that is where you're going to start falling completely apart. Because when it comes down to people, there is no trying to control them. And this is something many nerds try to do whenever they get power, is they try to use that power to try to control others. And when they can't control others, that's when they start getting frustrated. That's when they start getting angry. And that's when they want to try to take their toys away and leave the whole leave all those people behind. And that's what I see going on right now with your YouTube and your Facebook. However, in the business world, what happens is this doesn't really work very well. Because when you are in something like a free marketplace, in a free marketplace, people have the option to choose competitors. And this is the situation that I believe is going to lead to the decline of Facebook, YouTube, Google, Instagram, and Twitter, is they don't understand how our American economy works. And when you try to censor people on these platforms, what happens is this is when the free market starts to take its power. And this is what I believe is going to lead to the demise of Facebook, YouTube, Google, Instagram, and Twitter. In the same way, it led to the demise of AOL, Yahoo, MySpace, and all of the other platforms of the previous social media era. Because in a free marketplace, when you have competition, what happens is when one company starts to get too big for its britches and starts to believe that it can control people, what people are going to do is walk away from that company and go deal with a competitor, which will not make an effort to censor what people are trying to say or the messages they want to use on these social media platforms. Because what many of these internet social media companies don't understand is that as history repeats itself, the lessons here are that in a free marketplace like the internet, the internet is fluid. And because it is fluid, that means when one company gets too big for its britches and starts thinking it can dictate what people can say and do on its platform, it can be replaced by another company which will offer an open platform to those customers. And I'm looking at this cycle from a critical perspective, and I'm seeing how this cycle is starting to repeat itself because it seems like every 10 years that we have the internet going on, what happens is one group of companies gets too big for its britches, it starts thinking it's, it can control people, and it thinks it can dictate to people how they can think. And because they start thinking they can control people, what happens is the free market takes its effect, God's free will that he gave every human being takes effect, and that's what leads to the decline of those internet companies that were juggernauts. Because again, AOL was so powerful at one time in the early 2000s that it 
owned Time Warner, a big six legacy media company. And Yahoo was so powerful at one time, it was a multi-billion dollar company. Now, both of those companies, because of technology becoming obsolete and audiences migrating, are now owned by Verizon, who bought them for next to nothing because those companies fell out of favor with users of the internet. And the same fate, I believe, is going to happen to your Facebook, your YouTube, your Google, your Instagram, and your Twitter, because on the horizon, I see new competitors coming to take their place. For example, with Facebook, I see MeWe taking their place. With YouTube, I see BitChute taking their place. With Google, I see DuckDuckGo taking their place. And I'm sure there's a Twitter alternative being created right now because all those companies see the oppressive policies being put into place by these current media oligarchs over Silicon Valley. And these smaller companies are getting ready to offer an alternative to these companies because they look at the marketplace, they understand that the internet is fluid, and because they understand that the internet is fluid, they understand that once one company starts to get too big for itself and too hot for itself and starts thinking it can do things like control the way people think and the way people act, then what's going to happen is that new company is going to come in, offer things like Minds.com has offered protection of the First Amendment and the same things with Gab, they offer protections for the First Amendment. And because those companies are offering people the ability to speak freely and express themselves freely, what those companies are going to do is start laying the foundation for taking the place of these now currently popular websites in the 2000s, which will become rendered as obsolete and forgotten as the name of the companies AOL, Yahoo, and MySpace are right now. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications, like the ISIS series, the E-Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the Smith's Trilogy, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, E-Steam Goddess of. Elle's aspiring angel takes on a demonic dominatrix in this action-packed all-new E-Steam series adventure. Get E-Steam Goddess of in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today.